Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video, chassis restoration. Guys, I've been getting a ton of emails lately. I don't know what it is. Uh, seems to be almost on a daily basis. Uh, people recently are asking me about floor pans, where to get them, the thickness, which brands are best, so on and so forth. So a quick overview here. This is a 1956 chassis and as you can see here, there's that Strato silver oval window beetle that we are working on over there. And these are the floor pans, brand new pans that we put in uh, for this chassis. You see we blasted everything and we welded on new pans. Now I got these pans. Uh, CIP1 is my go-to place where I get most of my parts. Um, and uh, these pans are, are from CIP. And I don't know how to pronounce the name of the brand or the company that makes these pans, but this is the German equivalent, so the 18-gauge metal. I think it's like one point two millimeter in thickness uh i guess i think the company's called estri or that's that's for short estri the estri brand and you can find these on cip1.com right now for 206 a side so 206 dollars a piece and these are good thick pans i mean these are pretty heavy duty i like these a lot the fitment was excellent uh the welding was really nice along the seam here. Now I have uh, floor pan videos on my website on how to install these, and um, this is uh, so like second nature to us now on, on doing these pans. Uh, and we even uh, welded it up on the tunnel here because this was all rotted out as well. The fitment is really, really nice. And it's always great to do floor pans when you got a nice you know, open area and you can, you can work like a gentleman. I mean, we have this thing you know, jacked up here on a dolly and we got some jacks over here so it's always good to work like this and uh, do your floor pans but this is the estuary brand now i know cip1.com they sell three versions of the floors and they do vary in price uh, there is a, another brand that they sell it's an orange pan and that orange pan is about uh don't quote me on it maybe around 188 dollars or 190 dollars and then they have the igp brand and the IGP brand is a thinner metal. I think it's like 0.8 or 0.9 millimeter, something like that. And uh, they are thinner, uh, and they are about you know 40 or 50 bucks cheaper. And I think you can get them for about 156 dollars or something like that in that range. And the prices do fluctuate. CIP one does do a lot of sales uh, over time, uh, so you got to keep an eye on. I would say get their newsletter and see what kind of things are on sale. The IGP brands, as much as they are thinner, um, they're still good fitting pans. We've used them before. Um, and, you know, again, these are cars that are not going to be used on a daily basis. And, yes, they're nice and strong here. You can stand on this pan. It would be really – it can hold you up. It's really strong. But you know what? Even when you start – once you bolt these pans to the body – it's, it's going to be nice and strong. Uh, so even if you went with the IGP brand, you really, you're not going to really be hurting if, you're, if, it's just not a, if it's not a daily driver, you know. I mean, if it's a show car and you just want to tootle around town with it or, you know, take it out on occasion, they're perfectly fine and you can save yourself, you know, 50 bucks or so. Uh, but we go with the stronger ones when we, when we do, you know, the, the higher end restorations just, just to be safe, peace of mind, I guess. Um, but you really can't go wrong. And if you do rust proof the pans and you maybe hit them with a bed liner or something, a truck bed liner, that's going to protect it even more. So you really can't go wrong with, with either pan. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, it's way, way your option. CIP one I like because, you know, at least it's free shipping on the floor pans. Some places might be cheaper, but then you got to factor in shipping. So this is a 56 Beetle, and the floor pans basically from 56 all the way up to 1970 are really the same. The seat rails are the same. The contours are the same. It's when you do 55 and earlier. So say you got a, a 55 and earlier Beetle, like this is, here's a 55 over here. All right. Now the floor pan change was different in 55 and earlier so down to the split window time it's this contour here this contour right here in the pan which is different so in the 55 and earlier this contour line will start to cut in this way more now 
So you have a bigger flat piece here. Now what that does is now that moves the battery up a little bit. And so what does that do? Now it's positioned under the back seat in the right spot. You can use these pans on a 55 and earlier, but now that battery is going to be sitting in a different spot. And on the earlier seats, the springs do sit lower in the framing of the seat, the seat bottom, and it's contoured to fit around the battery. So if your battery's in the wrong position and you sit on those springs, those springs could touch the top of the terminals on the battery. So the only uh, guy that I know that's selling the correct floor pans for 55 and earlier is Gerson from ClassicFab.com. And you get his pans and you'll see you'll have the contour that cuts in here and is a lot wider. So that's the correct fitment. Uh, for your 55 and earlier Beetle. Now he is expensive, uh, a little more expensive than what you see here. And he's going to hit you with shipping. So I think you're looking at about $300 a side for your floors. But they are the 18 gauge metal and they are green. His stuff is green. Um, but you can always paint that over and, uh, you know, rust proof the pan, of course. So, uh, yeah, uh, th those are your best bets for floor pans. Wolfsburg West also has their own floor pans. And uh, they're also 18 gauge. I see them as a, at $195 a piece, uh, but you will have to factor in shipping there. So I still think CIP1 comes in a little bit better when it comes to the final price. Um, and I have not had a problem with either one of their pants. I've tried all three versions that they sell, and they are pretty good. The only other thing you got to keep an eye on, and I did mention this in another video, are the teeth here. The teeth here are much wider than the original teeth so the mechanism that's on your seat frame is not going to be able to close down on these correctly so you either have to thin these out or you make the gap wider on the seat frame for the handle and the lever to go over these teeth so uh but you know th that's about it so if you guys have any questions please email me at chris at classic vwbugs.com and uh, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And for the price of a cup of coffee, you can send us a PayPal donation link. Uh, that, really, that would be really beneficial. And we thank you very much for doing that. It could be something small, nothing crazy. And it uh, just keeps this content going and uh, keeps this channel alive. Because to be honest, guys, it takes a lot of time to do some of these videos, especially some of the how-tos where I got to stop the camera and there's a lot of editing involved takes a lot of time and really don't make much money on YouTube. Uh, so there's a lot more stuff that goes on in shop, of course, of building like you see here and a lot of resto projects that we're doing. So uh, just a little donation goes a long way and we definitely thank you for that. So guys got any question about chassis stuff? Oh, and I wanted to point out cause some people are uh, asking me about fuel line placement. As you can notice, this car needs a new fuel line. Because the one in here that goes through the tunnel is like frozen solid. There's not We can't blow through it, so we have to run a new fuel line here. So we got some new steel fuel line. And um, so what we're doing is we drilled a hole here, and we inserted the, the tube there. And then we um, put our own tab here and, uh, and to hold down the fuel line, to bang it over, to hold that in place. And we ran the fuel line here and then down, running along the brake line. So that is an option for you guys um, to, uh, to run new fuel line if you have to. If your car is already assembled, then you might want to run it on the outside of the car. But some guys are still wanting to put it in the tunnel. And the only way to successfully do that is you're going to have to take the bottom plate down on the tunnel and then get yourself in there. But uh, that could be a lot, really problematic. That's really hard steel there. So uh, this is the way we kind of do it. This will all get covered in carpet and insulation. So you're not going to see any of this. This tube is there to begin with because of the throttle here on the, on the early bugs, the throttle cable. So you're really not going to see any of this. And then, like I said, there'll be insulation and carpet uh, on top of this. And it runs along straight out the back. I'll show you where we did that. Right through here, we drilled another hole, or you could go through the brake line hole if you wanted to marry these together. And then we come out here, we welded another tab back here to hold 
this line in place. It's nice and strong, not going anywhere. And uh, now you have some free flowing fuel to go to your vintage rebuilt engine. So, okay, that was a mouthful. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's it. Chassis stuff. Got any questions? Pop me an email. See ya. Uh -huh.